Greetings and welcome once again to the Gaming Codex, the show right where we explain to you all the myriad of words and terms used to describe video games in the video games industry after a month of not doing this. Today's term is that of the game port, and what exactly is that? Well, in software engineering, porting is the process of adapting software for the purpose of achieving some form of execution in a computing environment that is different from the one that a given program meant for such execution was originally designed for example different CPU operating system or third-party library not to be confused with a game port which is a port in which you used to stick a joystick or a gamepad they just often be found on sound cards because where else would you put them porting video games from one platform to another is a very 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 old tradition it's actually how video games got started if you think about it for a moment because well pong was a port let's call it of an earlier game that was mostly a copy but it's, it's it's sort of in the same well it's not in the same ballpark but it's an example that i was hoping would confirm what i just said earlier but doesn't really so let's skip over that a game requires a port to each of the systems that it is meant to run on if a game is built to run on the n64 for example it will only run on that system because every bit about it is constructed to take advantage of that system of its memory of its cpu and not just in terms of specifications not in the idea that oh this has a cpu that's limited to this amount of uh, executions per minute this uh, frequency so we'll make a game that doesn't really go beyond it or doesn't behave well beyond it. no 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 it's more in the way of oh we know exactly where every bit of memory is on this device we're going to use assembly language to move those individual bits around those exact bits that we know where they are and will always be there regardless so porting a game like that to a different system that has a different cpu different memory different amounts of it different types of it will require going into the code and changing everything or at the very least changing most of it changing enough of it so that it will work on a different system. The amount of effort required to actually port a game differs depending on how purposefully built was it for a specific system. So if you take something like, well, every game built for the cell broadband processor, those were a pain to make in the first place and porting them to a different platform, that's gonna be uh, kind of difficult. Still, ports are not impossible to create, and they're easier to create depending on how much of a generalistic approach you take to it. If you start with a very specific hardware configuration in mind, again something like a console, then porting to a different platform will be a bit more difficult. But if you start by building a sort of a general kind of system that will adapt itself to whatever platform you plunk the game on, then it may be a bit easier. Well, it may be easier when you do the actual port, when you're actually building the infrastructure, that's still gonna be a bit difficult. Which leads us to the popular definition, and that is that the port is just recompile it to work on the other thing. It doesn't really work like that. Well, in some cases, it doesn't work like that. There are tools like the Unreal Engine, which will just let you bake a different executable, a different binary that will work on the Xbox, for example. But that is mostly because the Xbox in particular used to be a bit more similar to a computer, to a PC, than the PlayStation was, which kind of makes sense since the Xbox, the first one, was the Direct Xbox being powered by DirectX. But still, that doesn't mean that ports were necessarily easy to make. In the generation that uh, was a very long running one, where we had the Xbox 360, the PlayStation 3 and the Nintendo Wii, porting a game between all of those and the PC as well, that was difficult because the PlayStation 3 had such a different architecture to the rest of them and such a horrible video adapter in the form of the Nvidia one that was mostly unused that people were just making the games run directly off the cell broadband CPU. They did not really bother with actually making the GPU of the PlayStation 3 do something because it couldn't do anything. Well, not anything, but it could only do limited things. Also, there were differences in architecture in terms of memory, whereas on the Xbox you could address its entire 512 megabytes of RAM in every way you wanted to. 
on the PlayStation, you can only address 256 megabytes at a time for the system memory and the GPU memory. And then the Wii was a totally different animal. And then you also had the PC, which at the time was going through a bit of a growing pain with uh, the development of uh, Vesta, the death of sound cards, the appearance of Shader Model 3, all sorts of issues with individual drivers that you have to account for. And the idea is that porting a game was difficult. It could get really, really difficult. Uh, I got this information from somebody that says they were an internet rock star, so I don't have any actual way to confirm this, but I found somebody on Twitter that said it. So um, GTA 5, sort of according to this person, had a budget of around $400 million. A quarter of it went towards making ports. Now, if that seems like a lot, well, it is. But keep in mind that GTA 5 had two initial versions that were very different in terms of how they actually function because the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3 were completely different. And then we had the enhanced versions that came on the Xbox One and on the PlayStation 4, which were also different systems, but not in terms of hardware. Hardware-wise, they are very close. Well, they are in some ways very close to being the same, but the Xbox One had that ES RAM thing, which had to be programmed for and taken into account. So there were still some differences there. And then you also had the PC version of the game, which had to run on Windows 7, had to run on Windows 10, had to run on Windows 8, had to run on 8.1, had to run on a bunch of video cards that needed to be tested out properly. And performance wise, AMD got the short end of the story as we've all seen. It seems to run a lot better on NVIDIA for some reason even though the, um, you know, the console is running AMD hardware. But still, it's a port that works. And it's a port that functions at a technological level. However, a port isn't really just that, just getting the game to run on a platform. Because, well, um, I'm not sure if you're familiar, but Capcom used to have a different way of porting games to PC back in the day. Whereas uh, things like the Onimusha port, Onimusha 3D message, sort of look like it was running in a PlayStation 2 emulator. I say this because it reminds me a bit of the uh, PC version of Silent Hill 1. There is no PC version of Silent Hill 1, but there is an emulated version, like a self-contained emulator version, that does remind me of Onimusha 3D message. And Capcom's games from back then didn't really use much of the functions that a PC has. They didn't use the mouse. You had to play Resident Evil 4 without a mouse. You had to aim with a keyboard. Because, you know, it's a shooter, so why would you not use a keyboard to aim? Porting also means that you have to adapt your video game to the interface of the platform you're adapting it to. And that, in a way, is a art that's slowly dwindling away to nothingness, or has already, looking at you Elder Scrolls. You used to have fantastic interfaces for the PC, but now, no, you just have the console one, usually with very little actual use for a mouse. You even uh, add mouse acceleration and pretend that it's still being moved around the pointer, I mean, by a thumbstick. Which leads us to the marketing definition of ports, and that is, do we really have to? As I've said, porting a video game is no small feat. There are many, many intertwining bits and bobs that need to work together properly so that the final product actually works, looks well, and doesn't crash 99% of the way through. Which is something that happened to a game that was available on GOG. I forget exactly which game, but they said that uh, because of a memory management issue that's in this version of Windows, but wasn't in the version of Windows that was available back, back then when the game came out, an extra enemy is spawned near the end of the game, and the game has no way of handling that enemy being there. So instead of getting a finish condition after you kill the last boss, uh, there's still an enemy somewhere on the map that's not accounted for and you can never finish the game. Well, they patch that, but that's an issue that you have to take into account when porting a game from a different platform to another. Even though it was a still a PC game, it was running on an older version of Windows that handled memory differently. You know, those third-party libraries, those operating systems I mentioned at the beginning. And accounting for all of these is often not an easy task to achieve. But it is, quite often, a very worthwhile thing to do because you are increasing your user base. You are effectively doubling the possible number of people that can buy the game with each platform you port it to. Well, you're doubling from the 
original, I mean, not continuously doubling because that would uh, that would lead to some big numbers and no, then that, that doesn't happen. However, not a lot of people necessarily want this because it does take a lot of extra effort. Or at least it did when we had massively different architectures for uh, consoles and PCs. Now in the Xbox X, PlayStation 4 era, they are... <laughs> Also similar, though again, there's still some differences in the operating system, but conceptually they are quite similar. And even when they are capable of that effort, of achieving that goal, you will still sometimes not see ports of certain games from one platform to another. When it's about a PC game that's not being ported to console, it's often because of limitation in regards to, well, publishing the game. There used to be monumental issues with updating games on consoles because you had to pay like $10,000 to actually launch a patch. And there can be all sorts of issues. Some games may be just too big to actually fit on a console like Star Citizen. That thing is really meant for hardware that does not yet exist. Whereas the other way around, what interest would Sony have to port The Last of Us on PC? It would just make their platform less attractive, less exclusive, less likely to be chosen by people based on what games it offers. Because in terms of experience, well, yeah, the UI is nice, but I can just basically do everything that I can do on that on a PC as well. And this is not just me as some paranoid guy saying it. The representative of Microsoft Games in Germany said about a decade ago that were they to release Halo on PC, in Germany at least, a large percentage of the sales would be on PC. I don't remember the exact percentage, I think it may have been 80%, but I think that may be wrong. I know though that it was a large percentage and that's because well people would like to play it on a PC but that would be kind of counterintuitive because they're trying to sell the Xbox so as long as they want to sell hardware as long as they profit ten dollars from each game sold on that platform a lot of first-party developers they are not gonna want their games on other platforms well apart from Microsoft now because but I'm not saying the Xbox is doomed, it's just that um, they really want to go for more of a unified platform thing because the Microsoft Store is doomed. Hence, more ports, which they're not all that difficult to do since the Xbox is kind of running Windows 10. So closes another edition of the Gaming Codex. I'm back next time and we will talk about a brand new subject. Goodbye.